getting things going here. Uh, very much quiet aft side of a few thunderstorms across the area from earlier today. And as of right now, most of those are gone. A few thunderstorms left over. We'll see again the potential for some of that weather continuing into overnight. We're not seeing a lot of it in the way in anything in the way of showers or thunderstorms over the next several days. We may see the potential of some more activity this weekend. That again could be a bit of an issue for outdoor stuff, but for right now, again, it doesn't look like too much to worry about. All right, looks like we are up and going and everything is where it should be. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik from WDEF News 12 in downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee. If you're just joining us on Twitch TV or Facebook Live, got any questions, comments, complaints, if you absolutely must, go ahead and drop those into the comments section. We'd love to see more about what you're looking at out there when it comes to weather and other stuff going on. But for right now, uh, very much on the quiet side and should be staying that way into the course of the rest of the next couple of days. So it doesn't really seem like too much of an issue uh, for right now. Next couple of days, we'll be seeing some fairly warm conditions, but otherwise, again, not entirely terrible. Uh, numbers definitely a little bit below normal uh, for this time of the year, but uh, that is most welcome as we see again, uh, the potential for where we could be at this time of the year back into the mid to upper 90s, even the triple digits, record highs at this time of the year. Don't want to go that direction if we can possibly avoid it, but we'll be watching that very carefully in the next few days. All right, looks like we're all pretty well stabilized for right now on air. Uh, or online, I should say. So if you got any questions, please drop them to our comments section or the chat function on uh, Twitch TV. And thanks to everybody for stopping by to join us for tonight. Most of what we're looking at, again, in the high temperature department was pretty close to normal, right about where we should be again within a degree or two. Not bad. We've only gotten two hundredths of an inch of rain so far this month, so we're behind by over an inch and a half. And for the entire year, we're behind for about an inch or so. Record high, about 10 degrees degrees cooler than that today and that was last set only f about four years ago in 2019 a record low and we haven't seen numbers this cool in a while 40 degrees last set back in 1940 so difficult to imagine that much that was a pretty powerful burst of cool air that dropped on into the area there we're looking again at some uh Colorful conditions out there. Thank you, Sean Deaton, for a picture of a frog resting on a rose from Charleston. That's our West Shore home weather window picture of the day. Very colorful view for Tuesday there. If you've got pictures, send them in to us at pictures at WDEF.com or, again, drop them to the comments section of our Facebook, Instagram, or whatever Twitter is calling itself this week, X, apparently. So we see, again, uh, anything out there that you're seeing, let us know and give us a shout. And we'd love to see more about what you're looking at out there so we can show everybody else. Looks like we are in the bottom of the game right now from downtown at and Field. The Chattanooga Lookouts back home again for their last week homestand, week-long homestand, I should say, against the Birmingham Barons. And if this score is any indication, it looks like the Lookouts aren't doing quite so well for tonight out there. Rick Nyman will have more on sports uh, coming up later on this evening, so stay tuned for that coming up on News at 11. From our EPB Fiber Optics Weather Cam Network, Lee Point, Highway 153 and 64 showing up pretty nicely with, again, some pretty heavy amounts of traffic for this time of the evening. Usually don't have uh, too much to show in the way of traffic early on uh, for this time of the night. From Island Cove Marina and Resort, a little bit of sky shine reflecting off the cloud cover out there, and the clouds continue to make their way across the area. Not exactly all that clear. Veteran-owned Patriot Concrete Camera, the clouds are out there somewhere, Lookout Mountain and the Ruby Falls area on one side of the picture there. From Chattanooga Red Wolves Stadium, Tomahawk crane and rigging camera. Once again, that scrum from 75 north to Interstate 24 west showing the backup taking place due to the construction just off a of frame here. 75 south, everything is moving along uh, quite nicely for this time. And for one of our brand new cameras, thank you, Speedy's Total Car Care 
for giving us uh, the sponsorship for this camera on the EPB Fiber Optics WeatherCam Network uh, from downtown Coolidge Park from the Chattanooga Theater Center overlooking the bridges uh, and the Tennessee River back off there behind the trees. So we are seeing some fairly nice conditions uh, into this evening. We did have some pretty warm conditions today, mid to upper 80s, and we're just below that in the mid to upper 70s at this time. So a little bit on the mild side out there for the rest of the evening. We're coming up on 10 o'clock. So temperatures have been a little bit on the mild side for today, upper 60s to lower 70s. There are some spotty showers out across the area, even some thunderstorms taking place. Most of the heaviest amount of rainfall uh, running just northwest over to around uh, just north of Chattanooga, back to the west of Hamilton County. This is the News 12 viewing area for anybody who's tuning in from out of town. Southeast areas of Tennessee, extreme western North Carolina, northern tier of counties in Georgia, and northeastern corner of Alabama. So that is what we're looking at for right now, just scattered showers for the most part. Uh, some thunderstorms trying to get going from I-59, Birmingham all the way back over to just north of Atlanta, drifting on over to the east. One shower of a former thunderstorm heading back to the north around Rome, and that is trying to make its way into parts of the News 12 viewing area between State Highway 27 and Interstate 75, and that again is just north and west of Atlanta for this evening. We may pick up some more scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the rest of the evening. What we're waiting for is a cold front to arrive. Notice there's not in the first part of this visible satellite loop, there's not much going on, so the drier air is on its way, and that'll be sweeping into the area later on tonight. So a chance of showers and thunderstorms lingering past about early midnight hours, and that should just about do it for the chance of anything involving uh, rainfall coming on through. We've got a succession of fronts sitting across the southeastern United States and off the coast we've got a major hurricane. Lee is going to be expected to make that right hand turn and go parallel to the coastal areas but there's some problems with that forecast. More on that in just a little bit. Remember that again this is a ginormous area of low pressure so air is swirling around that area of the hurricane trying to fill that gap in the atmosphere up and once it does things stable stabilize and continue to stay very much on the mild side it said nature hates a vacuum and this definitely counts as a vacuum in the atmosphere so that great big dip of pressure where the air is swirling around that low pressure to fill it up as this goes back to the north it's going to pull a lot of air down to the south and that includes a lot of dry air coming down from south in canada and that's going to be helping to clear things out for us as it washes all of that uh, fronts back to the east of us and gets rid of everything that we see in the way of chances of precipitation, anything in the way of lots of clouds, maybe some clouds out there for the next day or two, but beyond that, there's just really not that much uh, happening anytime soon. All right, let's get to the next 72 hours into tomorrow morning mid to upper 60s partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies a warm day tomorrow maybe some showers down around atlanta and into parts of the appalachians but that's going to be about it mid 60s a few upper 50s into tennessee south middle tennessee and northeastern alabama could be a little cooler I don't think we're going to see anything in the way of speckles of rain showers. It's going to be too dry for that by Thursday. And then Thursday afternoon, again, too dry. The computer gets a little over eager of throwing these showers in out there. So the clouds sticking around for Thursday mixed in with some sunshine. And that is going to be about it for the rest of the forecast into very early uh, Friday morning, there is the possibility of some areas of clouds and some rainfall coming up this direction. It's a minor chance, and I still don't see anything in the forecast delineating our possibility of getting anything in the way of rainfall. Again, with those areas of fronts moving through, dragging down the dry air, clouds, Maybe. Rainfall, really doubtful at this point. I don't think we're going to be seeing uh, too much of anything else out of that for right now. So good news in the forecast overall as we see again the next several days. Uh, less in the way of chances of showers and thunderstorms. Now as Lee passes us around the east coastal area, 
and the winds pick up as that storm system passes, we could catch some of the effect of that as that air flows its way out toward the ocean. So Thursday could be a little bit on the breezy side, and that's something we're really going to have to watch uh, could be the possibility of maybe being a little choppy on the roadway. It's not enough for the National Weather Service to issue a wind advisory, so we're not seeing any question of that for right now. Possible? Yeah. Likely, once again, I don't think so because it just doesn't seem like it's going to be that powerful. Next couple of systems will be Saturday into Sunday. That'll give us, again, the potential of what we see in the way of showers and thunderstorms, and that is really going to be just about all we see. The really cool, and no pun intended, uh, thing about this forecast is that we could be easily, as you saw on the Almanac page back in the high 80s uh, to about the mid to upper 90s at this time of the year, we're not going to be anywhere close to that. It's going to be feeling rather on the nice side overall going through into the weekend. Friday night football looks excellent. Uh, outdoor activities, I think you should be okay. Just keep an eye on the possibility of showers and thunderstorms out there. And then staying on the mild side into next week. After this chance of rain into the weekend, I really don't see much in the way of rain coming our way anytime soon. So it looks like we are going to be staying decently dry out there. And the Climate Prediction Center seems to hold that up as well to where we get a decent amount of dry conditions for the next six to ten days. So I just don't see much out there in the way of uh, major problems out there. Jeff Peterson, yes, uh, spent almost a quarter century in Memphis. Comments section from Facebook here. And if you got anything to say on Twitch TV, go ahead and let us know uh, on that for now. Uh, as it always seems it's much hotter than we are because of local elevation, does the Mississippi River play a factor in uh, the temperatures in the sense that when you do have lower elevations such as Death Valley <clears throat> around the Dead Sea over in around portions of Israel, Jordan in that area, you can have much more high pressure and it can get a lot hotter out there. I think it's just partly because of just where uh, Memphis is into that particular location. Uh, because we get the hot, dry air coming up from not only northern Mexico, but sometimes right off the desert southwest. And we could even get bursts of hot air coming right up from the equator in that area. We are about here in the Tennessee River Valley. Chattanooga is, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around 600 feet elevation, give or take. I could be totally wrong on that, but that seems to be about right. And I know that Memphis is about... 300 feet above sea level, so we're a little higher. It's also here due to the fact that we are in this area of the country, we are in a temperate rainforest area, and that statistically we get more rain, more clouds, things like that, and because we get moisture from off of both oceans, that does tend to help keep us a little bit milder on the temperatures, but being so close to the desert southwest here, northern Mexico, and even the equator, the flow can really heat up that part of the Mississippi Valley. There are uh, some of those areas around Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, some of those summers with days of temperatures over 100 degrees, weeks even. Not my favorite place to be in summertime. And uh, like the comedian Bill Engvall, I d don't understand how people lived around here for thousands of years without anything in the way of air conditioning because it can get brutal all the way back toward around the uh, Memphis area. The Mississippi River, that's a good question. Does it play a major factor in the temperatures? Not quite so much. Uh, a lot of people attribute a little bit too much to the rivers in and of itself. When I was back at the University of Kansas, we if you go to Lawrence, Kansas, there's a man-made reservoir south of Lawrence, Kansas in around Douglas, southwestern Douglas County. And we have this one meteorology student that swore that Clinton Reservoir was its name, that that reservoir started almost all of the weather in the Northern Hemisphere. If a hurricane on the East Coast must have started in Clinton uh, Reservoir. If there was a hurricane in the Gulf, must have started in Clinton Reservoir. Big Arctic blast, well, there was a storm over Clinton Reservoir, so that must have been what started it. Doesn't really work that way. I wish I knew what happened to him because I would have loved to have read his doctoral thesis on how that all worked. But the tiny little areas of moisture, there are some microclimates, yes, but anything affecting the temperature on a large scale, 
doesn't happen. Likewise, anything in the power of a river or a lake or a hill to deflect a tornado, not not possible. Uh, my own hometown of Topeka, Kansas, can vouch for that because southwest of Topeka, there's a large uh, hill called Burnett's Mound, and that was supposed to protect the city of Topeka from tornadoes. June 8th, 1966, obviously that didn't happen. So it's a, a nice theory and, again, a very good question, but it uh, doesn't really have that much of an impact on there. So, uh, Jeff Peterson, thank you very much uh, for those questions right there. All right, a couple interesting things going on. First of all, I want to get a little bit more uh, terrestrial and take a look and see what is going on out there. We've got two systems of note in the Atlantic. One, of course, is Lee. Uh, we'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. That's still a major hurricane with winds of 115 miles an hour. Margo is out in the middle of the Atlantic. And as we've said before, the nickname for these storms, not bothering any piece of land, they're called fish storms because they don't bother anything, anybody but the fish. So there's really not much going on here. Now for Lee, I want to take a look at this forecast because over the last couple of days we've explained how these computer models called spaghetti models can ebb and flow and change and that's what exactly what has happened over the course of the last couple of hours. We've seen these forecasts change out there. By the time we get into the next few days, timing this out between uh, tomorrow afternoon and Thursday afternoon, it's going to pick up speed as it goes north and it looks like it's going to drop its strength from major to just plain hurricane of around category two for about the next 36 hours. Going to a category one Thursday early morning to Friday and then again notice that the east coast of the United States still several hundred miles offshore. But as we get up here Saturday afternoon, and the strings on here, so to speak, the spaghetti noodles, so to speak, those are different computer model runs showing what they think may happen. Put them all together and you get usually a decent consensus that shows where the storm is going. Main thing is to look anywhere in this cone area right through here. Category 1, Saturday afternoon, just offshore from New York and Boston and making its way toward Nova Scotia and Newfoundland back toward Halifax as a Category 1 storm. It's going over the colder waters, but it's going to take a while for those colder waters to really zap the strength of this storm. In the meantime, anything east of Boston, if you're heading to Maine, New Hampshire, even down to around Rhode Island, eastern Massachusetts, Connecticut, in that area, I would watch this system very carefully just to be on the safe side because as this goes through, yesterday it was wobbling a little farther back to the west. Now it's gone a little farther back to the east. And that's what happens as you get into timelines uh, with this storm coming on through to where things will change, especially in the long term. As we get closer, we know a little bit more about what's happening. So Lee, now a potential threat to parts of the United States. And again, right about the time we get into around the weekend, this is where we could see some problems. Uh, even if the storm manages to go on this side of the cone, we could see again the air wrapping around this. We could get some very gusty winds coming down through the White Mountains, across the St. Lawrence Seaway, across parts of down east Maine, even down to Boston. We could see some air trampler, air travel hampered. It would help if I could talk tonight. Uh, that's where we see in the potential where it could be kind of breezy, maybe some travel slowdowns, and there's still that possibility. Even though it's a small one, we could see it wander this direction and wind up over parts of down east Maine and parts of the New England area. So this is something really to watch out for. And again, please remember that we've got uh, half the season to go. We just passed the halfway point a couple of days ago. Now, one other thing to talk about is that we have Lee and Margo. We also have another system just off the coast of Africa. This one kind of working its way along Lee's path here. National Hurricane Center giving this disturbance an 80% chance of development, so a fairly high risk of development here. That's why it's colored in red. And as it moves its way out into the Atlantic, too soon to tell. Again, right north of Lee's path should take it right over to mid-Atlantic. This could be a problem for Bermuda in a week and a half or so. Doesn't look like a main problem. If it develops into something a little bit more cohesive, then we could be talking about tropical depression, tropical storm 
Nigel. That is next on the list of names on the end storm. We've got Margo, we've got Lee, so LM, possibly N. We'll see what happens as it gets a little farther out over parts of the Atlantic. All right, now talking about uh, something a little bit less terrestrial and looking out into a little bit farther away from the planet. What did I do with that graphic? I know it was here just a second ago. All right, we have to go back to the index. Pardon me a second. Okay, here we go. Uh, there is a geomagnetic storm in progress. The shock wave of what is called a coronal mass ejection worked actually a series of several of them about four of them made their way off the surface of the sun this blast of plasma billions of tons of energized gas blasting its way off the solar surface several of those go through the solar system but they don't really cause a major problem we just passed the anniversary of one of the worst solar storms ever called the carrington event which happened back in the late 50s early 60s of the 1800s uh, major impacts on that one this one is a pipsqueak compared to that but we could see some fluctuations in the power grid with all that energy slamming through the ionosphere and the radiation belt to protect our planet. We could see some fluctuations in power, maybe some brief radio blackouts, but that's about the worst that we're going to be able to see on this. The reason we say this, even though you're probably not going to notice much of anything down toward the surface, two questions usually arise when we talk about these things. Number one, what's the impact going to be in this case from the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center? Negligible, again, outside of those fluctuations in power. The second question we get is what is going to be going on with the aurora? Can we see it this far south? Now, if we had an event like the Carrington event, they saw the northern lights in the southern United States in the eight, late 1850s, early 1860s, somewhere in there. If that storm is that powerful, then we are looking at a possible catastrophic disruptive event to our modern way of life. Uh, that right there would trigger the northern lights going way far south. But in this case, the red line is for a very powerful system to where we would have to have a major solar storm to get them all the way down here. Now, if you go out and you point your webcam or your digital camera at the northern sky and you open the shutter for long periods of time, you might maybe see a faint kind of reddish glow to the horizon if you have a clear sky. But the trouble is we don't have clear skies tonight. We got a lot of clouds out there. So until that clears, you probably won't be seeing too much of anything else. If you know anybody back to the north of, say, the Ohio River Valley, I-40, I want to let them know about this. If they're astronomy aficionados, they might see a little bit more around the Great Lakes, New England, Northern Plain states can see them under the right conditions. But for us, very, very, very slim chance of picking anything up from this solar storm that is passing through our section of our cosmic neighborhood. So uh, will this repeat itself? Yeah, it, the sun belches stuff like this out all the time. It just has to be in the right position for that blast of gas to hit the Earth right at the right angle and at the right timing to get a major solar storm taking place. So for right now, that's about as good as it gets. I wish we could see the aurora this far south, but just statistically, we're not going to see it very well here. If you live again well to the north of us, we might, but that's about as good as it gets, unfortunately. So not seeing a great deal of help uh, out of that anytime soon. That'll about do it for tonight. Again, want to uh, get the information out to our teachers out there. If you'd like us to cut our weather experts to come visit you in the classroom we would love to be able to uh, come visit you but you have to fill out the form first on the food city weather in the classroom program and that's available at wdef.com weather fill out the form give us your contact information some days and times that might do well for your schedule and we'll try to cross connect here uh, what grade level we're talking to kindergarten presentation is going to be much shorter and much simpler than if we're talking to a high school physics group so please let us know target audience if there's a special subject of some sort you'd like us to talk about emergency communication preparedness being ready for these things mentally 
climate change, anything of that nature, please give us an idea about that. And all you have to do is just go to the Food City Weather in the Classroom program for more details on that. It's Tuesday, so we usually feature a collection of the web links that we find around from different sources that talk about climate change and more importantly what you and I can do for our home planet and our only home in space. This week's collection, very unique uh, set of circumstances. Question from the United Nations, their environment program and their sustainable development goals, the SDG for 2023. In the southern hemisphere, it has been a brutally warm, even hot winter. It's winter down there. It's been summer up here and summer's about to come to an end. The big question is what type of winter, if any, are we going to see this time around? And it's possible we could see some of the warmest temperatures we've ever seen in wintertime. Some areas may not get any snow that have usually gotten snow. It's a very good question to ask for right now. From the conversation website, a lot of people, and believe me, I've heard from a lot of them that say, well, we don't have to do anything. The planet is fine. We don't have to spend this money. We don't have to worry about anything. It'll do, be just fine without us. If we did absolutely nothing when it came to recycling, when it came to conserving energy, when it came to fossil fuels, if we did nothing, what actually would happen? And that's a very important question to ask. From George Takai, from the Star Trek fame, and also the author of They Called Us Enemy, an amazing graphic novel, and the play Allegiance. Uh, really great to be able to see that. Talking about an important personage, uh, talking about inconvenient truths and why we should listen to the people speaking those inconvenient truths. Uh, Mr. Takei, or Takei, I should say, uh, raises some important questions there. That's all available on my social media channels, so go ahead and find those out out there, especially on Facebook and Twitter, and also on Counter Social and Mastodon. Post those on there as often as I possibly can, so go ahead and check those out. And coming up on Thursday, we'll take a look at what's going on in the oceans and why we need to concentrate on protecting the source of heat for our planet that is getting overwarmed over polluted and over fish. And if you'd like to know more about that, stay tuned. We'll do more on that coming up as we go into around Thursday. That should do it for tonight's edition. Again, decently quiet uh, for tonight out there, so little, if anything, taking place at this time. More on the forecast, always available at WDEF.com slash weather. Chip Chapman will have your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning, starting at 5 a.m. Eastern, and I'll be back tomorrow afternoon and looking pretty quiet for now as we go into uh, the rest of the weekend. Thanks for joining us on Weather Overtime for Tuesday night, the 12th of September 2023. And we'll have more tonight on the, ten the 11 o'clock news. So join us then for that. And of course, keep an eye at WDEF.com slash weather. Thanks for joining us on Weather Overtime.